score we have is England 100. It's added only 58. Graham Gooch had the satisfaction of scoring a century before he was caught. Michael Blakey reports on the final hours of England's second test defeat of the tour. England's only realistic hope of drawing this game with just five wickets left and six hours to play was rain, and rain had been forecast this morning. The chances of winning looked impossible as they needed 357 runs. The one innings of authority among the England batsmen came from Graham Gooch. This morning he began on 88 not out. Gooch had been beaten several times by Michael Holding, but he was still there on 98. Two runs for Gooch, and a fine century he can be proud of, taking off the four best fast bowlers in the world. But whether it was going to save England and the series looked doubtful. Gooch and Willie had held out for the first hour, adding 30 runs. Croft came in to the attack. Willie, LBW for 17, and a sad loss for England. The same over, and this time David Bairstow took on Croft. Caught behind, and England were 198 for seven. And then the hammer blow for England as Croft raced in from the north end. Gooch caught by Joel Garner, who took it low down. That was the vital wicket. Gooch's fine knock had come to an end after scoring 116 runs. England were 201 for eight. Jackman had gone, and the end came a few minutes later as Garner bowled to Embury. West Indies had won by 298 runs, so two up with two to play, they can't lose the series. The thing that's beating us is not their batting, it's their bowling. Um, I think we bowled as probably as well uh, as we could have expected on these wickets. You know, we've kept them down to reasonable scores. Apart from the second when Viv played exceptionally well, well, if Viv played exceptionally well, they'll take any attack apart. But um, apart from that, I feel that every other part of the game has been very good. Uh, it's just this formidable four quick bowlers. And to score again, England out for 224. England were 260 for nine at.